Good morning everyone, how are you doing? It's Paul here from Unusual Things. Now today I am in Long Ditton Cemetery, which is near, well it's just a little bit further north of Guildford, but it's in Surrey area. You know, around that area, just up Woking, well, uh, you know what I mean, don't you? Anyway, we have come to find the final resting place today of Sydney Cam. Now, sir, Sydney Cam was a uh, got to make sure I say, I always get this wrong, aeronautical engineer. I think that's the correct terminology for it. Anyway, he designed planes, jets and things, you know. Um, the Hawker Hurricane Jet, um, and was a, a massive uh, influence in the uh, design and technology of um, aeroplanes back in his time. I'll tell you all about him real soon. Now, of course, um, this isn't the biggest of cemeteries. It's quite a little one, a little ickle one, but it's nice because it's in the middle of, I won't say the middle of nowhere, um, but it's a nice, nice little sort of village um, and you come down the road and it's quite chilled actually, it's quite nice. So uh, yeah, we'll hear all about Sir Sydney Cam in a moment. Uh, don't forget if you liked the video today, please give it a thumbs up. Um, if you haven't done so already, subscribe to the channel. It's absolutely free. It doesn't cost you in any uh, a penny. Um, and hit that notification bell as well. Now, um, as we're into the new year now, well, well and truly into the new year, we're a quarter of the way in. I just thought I'd mention it because I haven't mentioned it for a long time. And that's the uh, GoFundMe page. Uh, for those of you that are unaware, um, I set up a GoFundMe page at the rear end of last year now I know things are tough for everyone so please don't worry if you can't contribute anything whatsoever it's just to help uh, me take the channel to America to film some uh, famous graves out there um, my ultimate personal one would be Brandon Lee which is up in Seattle but then I want to obviously come down the California West Coast to go to Forest Lawn and all the other cemeteries that are there to see and film as many celebrities that I can um, over a time period so um, the link will be in the description uh, you know but I'm aware things are tough at the moment you know cost of living all the rest of it I'm completely aware of that but I just wanted to remind people because I constantly get asked how's the GoFundMe page going um, you know and at the moment it's on about 10% but you know I've been very transparent it's all on there if you're interested go and have a look just click the link down below anyway we'll get on now and we'll find uh, Sydney Cam's final resting place. So I'm just scouring whilst I'm talking, and we're here all about him first, okay? So we'll carry on now. So Sydney Cam, C B E F R A E S, 5th of August 1893 to the 12th of March 1966, was an English aeronautical engineer who contributed to many Hawker aircraft designs from the biplanes of the 1920s to jet fighters. One particularly notable aircraft he designed was the Hawker Hurricane Fighter. Sydney Cam was born at 10 Alma Road in Windsor, Berkshire, the eldest child of the 12 children of Frederick Cam, a carpenter, joiner and Mary Smith. The Cam family lived near Windsor and Eaton Central Railway Station. In 1906, he was granted a foundation scholarship. In 1908, Cam left school to become an apprentice carpenter. He developed an interest in aeronautics, Cam and his brothers began building model aircraft which they supplied to Herbert's Eaton High Street shop. After finding that they could obtain a higher price, they began making direct sales to boys at Eaton College, which were delivered in secret to avoid the attraction and attention of Herbert and the school authorities. These activities led to him being one of the founders of the Windsor Model Aeroplane Club in the early 1912. His accomplishments as a model aeroplane builder culminated in a man carrying glider which he and others at the club built in 1912. Shortly before the start of World War I, Cam obtained a position as a shop floor carpenter at the Martinside Aircraft Company which was located in Brooklyn's racing circuit in Weybridge, Surrey. His ability soon led to his being promoted to the drawing office where he spent the war period. After the company went into liquidation in 1921, Cam was employed by George Handerside, who had created his own aircraft manufacturing company, which was responsible for the creation of the Handerside monoplane. In November 1923, Cam joined the Hawker Aircraft Company, later Hawker Sidley, based at Canbury Park Road in Kingston-upon-Thames as a senior draftsman. 
His first design was that of the Signet, the success of which led to him being appointed chief designer in 1925. In 1925, in association with Fred Sigrist, Hawker's managing director, Cam, developed a form of metal construction that used jointed tubes as a cheaper and simpler alternative to welded structures. During his employment at Hawker, he was responsible for the creation of 52 different types of aircraft, of which a total of 26,000 were manufactured. Among his early designs were the Tomtit, Hornbill, Nimrod, Hart and Fury. At one time in the 1930s, 84% of the aircraft in the Royal Air Force were designed by Cam. He then moved on to designing aeroplanes that would become mainstays of the Royal Air Force in the Second World War, including the Hawker Hurricane, Hawker Typhoon and the Hawker Tempest. Cam had a one-tracked mind. His aircraft were right and everybody had to work on them to get them right. If they did not, then there was how. He was a very difficult man to work for, but you could not have a better aeronautical engineer to work under. Among the engineers who worked with Cam at Hawker was Sir Frederick Page, later to design the English Electric Lightning, Leslie Appleton, later to design the Advanced Fairy Delta II and Britain's first air-to-air -air missile. Sidney Cam moved from the technology of the biplane to the contemporary monoplane fighter aircraft. The result was the fighters flew faster and with the improved engine technology of the time, higher and could be made more deadlier than ever. The Hawker engineer Frank Murdoch was responsible for getting the Hurricane into production in sufficient numbers before the outbreak of the war after an eye-opening visit to the Mann diesel plant in Augsburg in 1936. When the Typhoon's design first emerged and entered squadron service, pilots became aware that there was an elevator flutter and buffeting at high speeds due to the positioning of the heavy Napier Sabre engine intake very close to the wing route. The engineering of the aircraft to travel at high speed and handle compressibility effects was one of the challenges of the day, but with his small design team of 100 members at Hawker, Cam managed to solve these problems and make the Typhoon an effective combat weapon, even at these speeds. As operational requirements changed, the Typhoon was used more as a fighter bomber in which its role was low level performance, weapon carrying capabilities and ability to absorb damage made it very effective. After the Second World War, Cam created many jet powered designs which would become important aircraft in the Cold War era. Notable amongst Cam's post-war work is his contribution to the design of the Hawker Sidley P.1127, Kestrel FGA.1, the Harrier is a well-known vertical takeoff and landing aircraft, VTOL, designed at Hawker Sidley, which would later merge into British Aerospace, now known as BAE Systems. The Harrier was one of the radical aircraft which took shape in post-war Britain, which required the bringing together of many important technologies, such as vectored thrust engines like the Bristol Sidley, later Rolls-Royce, Pegasus and the technologies like the reaction control system. Cam played a major role in determining these and other vital Harrier systems. In 1953, Cam was knighted for these and other achievements and his contribution to British aviation. Sidney Cam was knighted on the 2nd of June 1953 on the occasion of the coronation of Queen Elizabeth II. Cam was president of the Royal Aeronautical Society, RAES, from 1954 to 55. There was a full-size replica Hurricane tribute to Cam at his boyhood home at Windsor. He retired as chief designer at Hawker in 1965 and was succeeded by John Fuzzard. He, however, remained on the board of its successor, Hawker Sidley, until his death. Before he died, Cam was planning the design of an aircraft to travel at Mach 4, having begun his life in aircraft design with the building of a man-carrying glider in 1912, just nine years after the first powered flight. In 1966, Cam was awarded the Guggenheim Gold Medal, which had to be presented posthumously. Cam died in his 73rd year on the 12th of March 1966 whilst playing golf at the Richmond Golf Club. He is buried in Long Ditton Cemetery in the county of Surrey. He lived at Thames Ditton in Surrey. He married Hilda Starnes in 1915 and they had a daughter in 1922. So there's all the information there on Sir Sidney Cam. What an amazing inspirational man he was. Now apparently he was very very generous um, but he could also be a bit of a pain to work for but rightly so because he was so meticulous in his work and he wanted everything um, you know down to the finest detail sorted which when you're working as a um, aeronautical engineer 
you know, you expect that to be a good thing, really, don't you? Because you don't really want someone that cuts corners, that doesn't have attention to detail. As a pilot, you'd probably be a bit worried, all the crew, you know. Anyway, so that's all the information there. We're going to have a little look now, see if we can find his final resting place. Okay, so I've been having a good look around, and do you know what? I think I found it. Here we go. In loving memory of Sir Sidney Cam, CBE, 1893 to 1966, and his devoted wife, Hilda Rose, 1897 to 1977. So we have the final resting place of Sir Sidney Cam, and you know we've all got a lot to thank this man for for his contribution um, to the war effort and of course his designing skills that helped take aircraft onto the next level which back then was really needed so bless you and thank you Sir Sidney so there we have it the final resting place of Sir Sidney Cam. You know, we've got a lot to thank that man for in terms of his design skills and as I said taking aircraft on to the next level which was uh, well and truly needed back at that time. Anyway, um, if you've heard of him before, if you haven't, uh, if you're um, into engineering and he got you into it, he was an influence in you, leave your comments down below won't you and um, yeah. If you like the video, give it a thumbs up. If you haven't done so already, subscribe to the channel. And I will see you lovely people all on the next one. Take it easy.